In this presentation, we're going to enter journal entries related to overhead into our job cost system. The information will be on the left. We're going to enter that into our general journal. We'll then post the journal entries in the general journal to the general ledger. The general ledger then being used to create the trial balance. The trial balance is in order, assets and then liabilities, equity, income, and then expense accounts. We're currently in balance. The debits minus the credits equal in zero. Nothing currently in net income. What we're going to do now is record items related to the factory overhead. And that's going to be items that anything that is in the factory that we cannot apply to a specific job. So if we think about these types of things, we're saying, well, what can we apply to a job? We know that anyone that works directly on a particular job, we should be able to apply that out, direct labor. Any material that is, is large that we can apply to a particular job, if we're talking about like guitars, the wood in the, in the guitars or whatnot, uh, if we're talking about uh, construction, any uh, large items, if we're tiling something, the tiles, of course, would be in there. Those would be the things that we can specifically tie out. Now, something we cannot specifically tie out, and we've already talked about a couple of them, one being indirect materials. So if we're talking about like small things like grout or maybe in a, in a job, we might not want to track those things. And therefore, we put those into, into uh, overhead because we couldn't assign it to a job. Or people that work in, in the factory that are supervisors or, or supervising multiple jobs, we don't know how much time they spent on each job, perhaps. And therefore, we're putting it into overhead and we'll apply out their costs to the jobs in some other format. Anything else on the factory, if we're, if we're producing something in a factory, then anything else is going to be part of that. If we're in construction, uh, maybe the, the driving or something like that, if we're not applying it to a specific job, uh, could be something that would be, you know, anything that's going to be something that is a cost. We know it's part of the job. It should be included as part of the cost of the job. But... Uh, we don't know exactly <laughs> which job to put it to, then goes into overhead. So if we have a factory then, and oftentimes book problems will have, you know, a very clear distinction between what's in the going to be in the factory and what's in the administrative office. So if we have the factory, if, uh, if there's depreciation on equipment and it's factory equipment, well, then that depreciation should be going into overhead as opposed to uh, if it's equipment that's going to be in the office then that should, it's going to be uh, an expense, depreciation expense. If it's rent on something, you know, in the factory, if we're renting a warehouse or a, a factory where we put uh, the inventory together, then that's going to go into work and process. Utilities, insurance. Now, notice these are the types of things that when we see them again, we, type, we see these and we probably just automatically, especially something like utilities, we probably see that and say, What's the journal entry? Well, we credit cash, we debit utilities expense. You know, that's just the journal entry for utilities. We've probably just memorized that. But we're going to have to unlearn that if that's what we've memorized because uh, we're applying that out because of the matching principle. Normally, if we're not a construction company, when we pay the utility bill, it's because we used the utilities to help us generate revenue in that time period. And uh, in this case, we're, if it's on the factory where we make stuff, then we didn't use that utility. We didn't pay the utility bill to help us make money yet. It's going to help us make money in the future or earn revenue in the future. Uh, what it's done so far is it's helped us to make inventory. So we've got, these are really fairly simple journal entries, but uh, we probably have to kind of unlearn just a habit we have of, of thinking that these journal entries are just recorded one way as an expense because uh, just of the type of, account they are uh, really they're an expense because they they used to represent costs that were used in a period of time in order to help generate revenue now they're there to help us generate inventory so if we go through these for example we're going to say that the depreciation on the factory equipment so it's factory equipment usually any any time a depreciation journal entry is there it's always depreciation expense debit credit accumulated depreciation but this time, we still have accumulated depreciation, meaning this factory equipment is still going down. It's, it's going down in value. We're estimating how it goes down in value. But the debit's not going to be down here on the income statement because we haven't used that equipment in order to help make money or revenue yet. What we've done is we've helped it to make an asset. 
So it's going to go up here. It's going to be part of our assets, not in work in process, but into factory overhead. It's going to eventually go to work in process, but we don't know which job to put it to, so we can't go there either. So we're going to credit the accumulated depreciation here in J13. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to put that on the bottom in B17, right click and paste one, two, three. This is the same as whenever we record depreciation, we credit accumulated depreciation, credit negative 2,500. We're still going to debit something. I'm going to do that with a negative of this number formula. There's our debit. This is usually a depreciation expense, but, and that's where the weird thing is. It's not depreciation expense here. It's going to go into not work in process because we don't know which job to apply it to. Can't put it there. It's going to go into the bucket factory overhead because we eventually want to put it in the work in process and we eventually want to put it into finished goods uh, inventory but we can't do it yet uh, so it's going to go into work at factory overhead so i'm going to right click and copy we'll put that on top in b16 right click and paste one two three so so here's our journal entry again it's a little bit tricky we have to unlearn a bit to do that so here's factory overhead here's factory over here overhead here we're going to post it it's like the third to last uh, green or asset account it's going to be in the same order on the general ledger so we'll go to the right factory overhead is down here i believe i've seen it a few times so here's s27 s27 we're going to say equals i'm going to scroll to the right and find the last journal entry we had there it is factory overhead and there's that 2500 and enter so that's going to bring the balance. So here it is. It's in equals C16. It's going from 1,750 up by 2,500 to 4,250. That then is found on the trial balance. So that's being used to create the trial balance. At least this one is down here. So there it is on the trial balance. We're out of balance by that 2,500 until we record the other side. So here's the other side, and that's going to be accumulated depreciation, last uh, asset accounts, a contra asset account. So we're going to go, meaning it's an asset with a credit balance. So we're going to go over here to X14, accumulated depreciation credit side, X14 equals. I'm going to scroll to the left, scroll down, pick up this 2,500, and enter. So there we have it. It's at, at uh, it was at 150, 3,000 credit. It's going up in the credit direction, 2,500 to uh, 155,500. That then being used to create the trial balance. So it, it acts the same on the on this side, of course, bringing down the book value. Here's the equipment. This account went up, bringing down the book value to 354,500. And then, of course, on the on the other side, however, we created an asset of inventory. It's, it's a, all this is inventory. We're all moving around inventory, and it's gonna uh, then hopefully get to finished goods, and we'll sell it finally, and that's when we'll expense it. We'll never see depreciation expense on this factory equipment. What we will see is cost of goods sold, which includes the use of the factory represented by uh, the the depreciation that was recorded into this item here in the in the factory overhead okay so then all this other stuff rent paid utilities and and insurance um these are usually things we think of as expenses insurance we might think of the a prepaid insurance but we're gonna you know uh, right put it into put all this into the jobs at this point so we're gonna say so maybe if this was monthly insurance we're gonna put it into the job so we could do this with three different journal entries which would credit cash and debit uh, factory overhead and then credit cash 250 and credit factory overhead but we can also just combine them into one journal entry and so that's what we'll do here and in practice of course we would write probably three checks but uh, in terms of a journal entry cash is going to go down by these three items and we're going to debit factory overhead for that amount now when you see this in a book problem they're often going to kind of make up accounts here. Well, let's look at this account and see why that might be the case. Uh, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to pay cash for this uh, 1,600, the 250, and the 1,000. So cash is going to go down. 
I'm in C6, right click and copy. We're going to go down, skip a line, skip another line. So we're on the bottom in B20, right click and paste one, two, three. Now I'm going to add these accounts up. I'm going to make it a credit. So it's going to look a little funny, but I'm going to say negative of 1600 minus 250 minus 1000. And that'll give us the credit of 2850. If you want to do it another way, you could say sometimes equals negative and then brackets because I want to take whatever we have here and flip the sign. 1600 plus 250 plus 1000 like this and then and then so it's going to add these up and I need the brackets to flip the sign if I don't have the brackets then uh, it'll be wrong <laughs> and it will add what I want so and then enter so there we have it and then we're going to say the debit is going to be negative of that number and so the debit then instead of going to rent uh, expense utilities expense and insurance expense prepaid insurance expense so it's going to go into factory overhead. It's going to be part of the inventory. It's not going into work and process. Why? Because we don't know which job to put it to. We're going to eventually apply the factory overhead to work and process using some kind of estimation method. So it's going to go into to overhead now into this bucket. So I'm going to right click on overhead, put that in B19, right click and paste one, two, three. So there's our journal entry. Now, no, from this journal entry, you can't really tell what happened here because factory overhead could be anything that is, is, that's part of the jobs that we couldn't, part of inventory that we couldn't apply to a job. And the cash could, you know, it doesn't tell us what we paid the cash for. So in practice, oftentimes we'll have a description here, which will tell us, you know, we paid the cash for this. But a lot of times book problems are going to try to tell us this just with the journal entry. So when you see book problems, you'll see journal entries that look kind of funny, not just because they're, they're not debiting what we would normally think of debiting if it wasn't a manufacturing company, which would be expenses other than the factory overhead, but also because they try to make like payable accounts. So for example, if I made this uh, utilities payable, if I debited uh, factory overhead and credited utilities payable, then without, a, without having a description, you can say, well, we credited utilities payable a liability. So it must have been that we have a utility bill that we're applying to the overhead. So again, in, in practice, we probably would never do that because we usually just pay the utility bill and apply it out. But in book problems, you might see start to see these payable accounts and start to say, well, manufacturing companies must have more payable accounts than other companies. And no, the reason that the book's probably doing that is because they're trying to be able to show just with the journal entry that what's happening. And, and it's easier to see what's happening if you have something like wages payable, utilities payable, rather than just crediting cash. So, but again, in practice, you would probably credit cash. So just be aware of that when you see that in the book problem. It's there to help. Uh, sometimes it's not helpful because it kind of confuses things more to have the pay payables that you wouldn't normally see. Um, so that's that. So we, we have this here, these, these items being credited, cash being paid, kind of like the monthly expenses. Instead of them going to expenses, them going into factory overhead. Let's post this out. Here's the debit. It's going to go into factory overhead. So that's like the third to last account on the trial balance, third to last account on the general ledger. And we've seen it a few times now. It's going to be down here somewhere. So there it is in S28, S28. So within S28, we're going to say equals and point to that 2,500, 2,850 and enter. So that brings the balance was at 4,250 up by 2,850 to 7,100. That then, of course, can be found on the trial balance we're out of balance by the 2850 until we record the other side so here's the other side cash and so cash is our first account first and favorite there it is and we're going to be on the credit side it's going to make it go down so we're in p9 that equals this uh, 2850 credit to cash 
bringing the balance down from uh, 418,000 by 2,850 to 415,150. That then the balance on the trial balance, we're back in balance, no effect in net income. And again, this may seem funny because we paid the utility bill, the rent and insurance. How is there no effect on income? Because we didn't use those to help us generate revenue. We used them to create inventory. When will they affect income? When we expense them in the form of cost of goods sold, will we ever see a utilities expense related to an expense that we paid for utilities on the factory? No, it's all, it's going to be a part of the inventory. We're never going to see an expense related to utilities expense that we paid for the factory because it's going to be included in the cost of goods sold. Note also that we didn't do anything to the jobs over here. If I go to the right, we didn't have to do anything to the jobs. Why? Because we didn't know which job to put it to. We didn't, that's the problem. So we couldn't put it to work in process because we didn't know which job it goes to. So eventually we will have to record it out to uh, the jobs. We'll have to record some type of factory overhead, use some type of allocation base to do so.